Okay, so here's our finished product we're aiming for. Very hastily done in about 15-20 minutes. Uh, we've taken, obviously, a picture of our glorious quad and added a very large pig with a hastily drawn shadow. So this tutorial will walk you quickly through what you need to know to do this. There are many more tools available to you here on Aviary, but I want to give you at least what you need to know. So here we go. Okay, so you'll need an account on Aviary, so sign in for that. And then once you're ready to go, then you're going to need to go to the advanced suite and use the image editor. Launch. thing you need to do is to load an image file for your background and I'm assuming you've already gone online and downloaded an image for your background and an image for your foreground whether from the web or from images you shot yourself And here we go. Now before you do anything, you want to go ahead and save this document so you can come back and edit it if something crashes. Because you'll notice it says you haven't saved yet. So I'm going to click Save As. Give it a name. Save as new creation. Okay, now that you got it saved, I'll come back to this later. Continue working on the creation. Okay, now that you have it saved it's time to check your image size and make sure it's neither too big nor too small. Just remember the parameters that I'd like you to have this between 800 and 1200 pixels wide. So you go to image, image size, and here is where you set that. And remember, you can't size up without doing some forms of interpolation in which the program has to guess how to fill in those pixels and it probably won't look so great. So here you just need to size it down if it's really big or size it up uh, only as needed but probably not. This is actually pretty good but let's just say I want to put it a thousand. Okay, got my background. Now I need to get my image I want for the foreground. And the way you do that is to go to File, Import File. Uh, again, I'm assuming you already have your foreground image. I've got this picture of pig. Open, Import File. Now, the first thing I would suggest you do is get this thing sized and positioned roughly where you want it. And that will take some guesswork about linear perspective, for example. So you use the Move tool here. Click and drag it where you'd like it. And I'm kind of looking for where the lines of the big piggy's feet line up with the ground, because I want to make a giant pig. And I think that works pretty well for the lines I imagine on that ground. So I like that. Um, I could resize if I wanted. By clicking this guy, the transform. And again, you'll want to hold down shift while you drag if you want to make it uh, size proportionally. Okay. Now, you want to apply those changes. Yes, it asks you that when you change your tool. Now, the thing you need to do is remove your background around the pig. And this is the most painstaking part of this process. You will find that other programs 
more expensive programs, more technically involved programs, such as Photoshop, will give you easier ways to do this. So consider now that you're doing this in the simplest possible way, but a way that uses the same principles of any other program you're likely to find. There's two ways that you might go about this. One is to simply erase the background the way you would with the end of a pencil. The other is to select parts of the background and delete them. First, I'll show you the eraser. And to do this, I'm going to zoom in first so I can just get a better view. Zoom in. Now, you'll want to make sure that you're up on what's going on with layers here. Notice that I, over here, and if you can't see this, you have to open your layers palette, you can see that you have a stack with a blank sort of piece of paper for your background, the quad picture I uploaded for the actual background, and then the top layer is where my piggy is. There's a tutorial on, on layers on the aviary site that you can check to learn more about this. Okay, technique number one for getting rid of background, eraser. Eraser is part of the same part of your palette where this brush is. So you have to move over, select the eraser, and then you can select how big you want your eraser to be. And I generally start from big and then work from small. And again, note that because I'm on the piggy layer, it's only erasing the pixels in that layer. It's best to do it in little strokes so that if you go too far, like whoops, you can just go up here and undo. And then generally, I'll get my size a little smaller as I get closer to the edge. And I'm just using my trackpad on my laptop for this. But of course, different mice have different effects, harder or easier. Again, the trick with the eraser is just to keep releasing your mouse button every and then so you're taking little bites. That way the undo is always available to you and screw up. Okay, the other technique, uh, you might use these in combination or exclusively. I'll close this so I can see. Is instead of using the eraser, to use the selection tool. So here, think of it as like a drawing a freeform line. And you're really creating a vector shape here called a path, usually. go and it makes this little lasso. And then you can delete, edit, delete. Now, now one thing you can do is set the feather of the selection to get a little bit of a different effect, especially on those sort of fuzzy borders. So I'll set the feather to something dramatic like 20 pixels just so you can see what it does. Now when I draw my selection tool, watch what happens when I delete. You can see the edge isn't quite so hard and it can just help make a more realistic line than say what happened with my eraser here. So Again, compare. This is with my feathered selection tool using delete. This is with my eraser tool. And you'll probably use some combination of both. Okay, so I've gotten pretty far here just to show you one technique. 
is that I just used my eraser tool and traced the whole edge and got pretty close to the edge of the pig everywhere. And now I'll just use my selection tool to quickly get rid of the rest. So I'll just hit the other selection tool. So instead of using the freeform lasso, using the polygonal lasso. And this just lets me quickly draw these lines. Click, click. And this just goes a little faster than, than using my eraser on these big things that don't actually need much accuracy. And when you're trying to close a loop, you just go back to the beginning, and you might not be able to see there, but there's a little circle will appear when you tell when you overlap the start of your lasso.